Hello and welcome to worship for May 2nd, 2021. Let's open with a word of prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, that through your word we may be guided into the love of God for all the world. Speak, Lord, for we are listening. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. About that time, while the number of disciples continued to increase, a complaint arose. Greek-speaking disciples accused the Aramaic-speaking disciples because their widows were being overlooked in the daily food service. The twelve called a meeting of all the disciples and said, It isn't right for us to set aside proclamation of God's word in order to serve tables. Brothers and sisters, carefully choose seven well-respected men from among you. They must be well-respected and endowed with the spirit, by the Spirit with exceptional wisdom. We will put them in charge of this concern. As for us, we will devote ourselves to prayer and the service of proclaiming the word. This proposal pleased the entire community. They selected Stephen, a man endowed by the Holy Spirit with exceptional faith, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. The community presented these seven to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. God's word continued to grow. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased significantly. Even a large group of priests embraced the faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, I've shared with some of you before that uh, while I was in seminary, I waited tables at the local O'Charlie's restaurant. And I fully admit that I was not a very good waitress. I was, I got by. I wasn't, it wasn't terrible service, but I certainly was not really excelling at it. Waiting tables is hard, and it's hard to do well. There was another waiter at the restaurant, and if I was a diner at the restaurant, he's the one I wanted to be my server. He got the orders right, drinks were refilled, and he knew when to make conversation and when to just take away the dirty dishes and leave the check. When the events in the book of Acts take place, if a woman was widowed and there wasn't a male close relative to take her in, she was destitute. She was forced to scrape by on whatever she could just manage for herself. Part of the ministry of the early church, and we see this extending into the church's ministry today, was to help feed and provide assistance to widows and others who were in need. At what we would now label as maybe a food pantry or a soup kitchen, the widows would come and they would receive the food that they needed to be able to live. But the problem was that the distribution was not being done evenly. Now, we don't have a motivation for this discrepancy in food distribution. It could have been uh, discrimination. It could have been just poorly run. Whatever the reason behind the discrepancy, all the disciples agreed that it is not right and must be remedied. Many Christians from all over the known world had come to Jerusalem. It was a hub of the early church, and this included widows from all over, both Greek-speaking and Aramaic-speaking. Aramaic was the dialect of Hebrew that Jesus spoke. The one group that, being, that one group was being ignored or overlooked goes against what the Apostle Paul wrote. He wrote about what happens in the community united and led by Christ. And he says, in this type of community, there is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave or free, but all are one in Christ Jesus. And here, there is a division being made, whether intentional or unintentional, between those of Jewish descent and those of Greek descent. Clearly, everyone agrees that this division must be remedied. Something must be done to correct this problem and bring about equality in food distribution. But the twelve feel that their plates are full. They have been overseeing the food distribution, and frankly, they have to admit they've done a poor job of it. They are at a leadership crossroads. They can either try harder to do everything they are doing to proclaim the gospel and run the food distribution ministry, they can just try to push through and, and do better. 
And let's be honest, we know how that's probably going to turn out with them becoming exhausted, burnt out, or worse, resentful of some aspect of ministry when it takes away from other parts of their ministry. So the disciples have to come to accept what every worn out and overworked person among us has had to accept at one time or another. You can't do everything. And if you think you can do everything, there's probably something you're not doing very well at at all. So the disciples have come to the point where they need to say, we need help. Moses came to the same point in his ministry several times. At first, when God told, told Moses to go talk to Pharaoh, Moses said, I don't want to go alone. So God sent Aaron with him. When Moses was trying to mediate all the disputes from among the Israelites when they were in the wilderness and he was running himself ragged, his father-in-law pointed out that he needed help. So Moses learned to delegate. And then toward the end of his ministry, Moses knew he would soon no longer be able to lead the people. So Joshua was identified as a leader of the people to walk with Moses for a little while and then take over. So we've seen from the way that God works through people in the past that there comes a time when help is needed. The work of the people can be not, cannot be done by one person or even a few people. And that's just as true today as it was in the early church. The work God has placed before us, the calling God has given us is not meant to be done alone or just by a few people. This passage has been pointed out as the beginning of ordained ministry. And we can say that this was the beginning of our system of elders where we share responsibilities and joys of serving God in and through the church. It's true, but there's more to it than just saying, this is the beginning of our system of governance. This is the realization that God has called and still calls each of us in some way to further God's kingdom. This is the realization that we do not walk alone. Now, you may not find yourself being called to preach or teach the gospel, or you might, but you are called. God calls each one of us to do the work of God's people. The Holy Spirit empowers us to fulfill our calling. Jesus Christ leads us on our journey. You are called. Your work matters, and you don't have to do it alone. This is the blessing of the community of faith. Thanks be to God. And don't forget to, to tip your weight staff. Amen. Let us pray. In the blessed hope of the resurrection, O oh Lord, we lift up our prayers to you in Christ's name. We pray, O oh God, for the church that you would build us up in faith, hope, and love. Build us upon the cornerstone of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us be a living sign of your love for all the world. And loving God, we pray for your world. Gather up the scattered people of the earth, lift up the lost, deliver the weak from danger, and help our leaders shepherd the poor to safety. Loving God, we pray for this community. Translate our words of love into action. Teach among us who have plenty to care for our sisters and brothers who need our help. Life-giving God, we pray for loved ones. Help those who are suffering. Restore them body and soul. Walk beside them through every dark valley. Feed them with mercy. Anoint them with healing. Eternal God, show forth in us and in our world the good news of your saving power and love, so that all may believe and have life in you through Jesus Christ, who is risen indeed. Amen. Go out into the world in peace to serve and love God in whatever way you are called. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. 
the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.